Hey, well, it is a team of doing, sure. And the team is out uh, this week, but I'm here to talk about the SNL controversy with Shane Gillis. <laughs> uh, Shane Gillis, my favorite uh, comedian, and uh, he was going to be on SNL. And now Shane Gillis is not uh, going to be on SNL, and it is uh, such a dishonor. Uh, we're here with uh, Chief Vaping Silence. And he is the chief, and he's a, uh, Ben is actually dressed as a as a as a proud Indian chief uh, who was very pro colonist, <laughs> and there are, we, this is not written about, but many of the uh, Indian chiefs love the colonists, and um, Ben is is dressed up after that chief who said our way of life. Is valid. However, <laughs> progress is what it is, and you know. And he he started the uh. It, it, it's uh the Native Americ exit, the Native Americs exit, the Native Americ ex exit, the Native Americs it. We're like Blexit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candace Owens, you did Blexit, so you did Native. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's very difficult. This is just something that we didn't use for a sketch. We bought it. We had it. I threw it on. Is everyone ready for election day? <laughs> it's election day in America. Board up the stores and get a gun. Board up the stores and get a gun. It's a healthy democracy. We've boarded up all the stores. <laughs> all the glass that can be smashed is now behind wood. That's how you know we're doing good. Walmart has stopped selling guns and ammunition, <laughs> but they're still selling liquor. Just booze it up. Trump or Biden, booze it up. Hot SpaghettiOs, booze it up. Don't ask about your job. Don't ask about your health insurance. Don't ask why your kids are on drugs. Don't ask about the vaccine. Just put the needle in your ass. Don't question us and we won't have to kill you or make things so bad that you kill yourself. <laughs> I'm Attorney General Ashley Moody with a warning about contact tracing scams. Health officials in Florida are calling people who may have been in contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. It's extremely important that they make contact with potentially infected individuals to help slow the spread of this deadly disease, making contact tracing vital to ending this pandemic. Sadly, scammers are mimicking these calls in an attempt to steal personal information. <laughs> if you receive a call from someone who claims to be a contact tracer, take steps to confirm that the call is in fact from your local health department. Know that a legitimate contact tracer will never ask for your birth date. They already have this information and will simply ask for confirmation. That's comforting. Contact tracers will never ask for your social security number or banking information. They have that too. They also will never reveal the identity of the COVID-19 positive person you may have had contact with. So what the fuck's the point? Finally, if a call seems suspicious, hang up. Look Get her for the out number of, here. of your local health department. Get her out of here. This is again an attack on entrepreneurs. People reaching out to other people to do business, to drive the economy. It's about commerce. And if people want to call people and 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 present and say, hey, you might have been in contact with somebody who had COVID-19, get a test, and then use it as a way to present them with a business opportunity. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And shame on the Attorney General of Florida. Shame on her. Shame on her for that anti-business attitude. Shame on her. How dare she? We all don't get checks from the government. We all don't get checks from Uncle Sam. Some of us need to go out in the streets and earn a living, bring home the bacon, rustle up a little cabbage. And what in what is she doing? She's discouraging men like myself. I got a list of names of Florida. I'm just going to call all of them and let them know they might have been in touch with somebody 
who has COVID-19. The fact that scammers are using the contact tracing uh, to, to try to scam people is just, it's, I know it's sad, but it is so funny that it's happening. Like, it's so funny to me that there, because I mean, pe we would have done that. We would have been like, hey, how are you? Hey, is this Miss Miller? Yes. Listen, it's never an easy call to make, but we just want to let you know that you may have been in contact with somebody who has tested positive for COVID-19. We have it on some good information that you have exposed yourself and your family to this potentially devastating disease. Have you taken a COVID-19 test? Well, good news is we can show up at the property with a COVID-19 test, you and the entire family, for, for seven easy payments of $69.99. Also, what rate are you paying on the mortgage? Mortgage rates have dropped precipitously due to the economic climate. Is there a way that we can help you streamline some of your debt? And refinance that property in Florida while we're testing your family for COVID-19. I think that's the smartest thing to do. Am I wrong here, Mrs. Miller? I don't think I am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. Vacation is over, kids. You're going back to school, says Meatball. New York schools can reopen, Cuomo says, in contrast with much of U.S. We all know Governor Cuomo. I affectionately... Call him Meatball. And we know his brother, Chris uh, Fredo Cuomo Corleone, who was offended at the name Fredo. He thought it was a, a slur against Italian Americans. So now we call him Chris uh, uh, Fredo Cuomo Corleone. And uh, we remember and we forgive him for his lie that he had coronavirus and beat it by chest exercises. Remember that when Chris Cuomo had coronavirus and beat it by going like this. That's how we beat it. So we apparently shut down the economy for something that you can beat by just stretching your chest in the living room of your home. So we forgive him for his lie, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tim Dillon Show. There's going to be some background noise here. You shut the fuck up about it. We're doing a video episode for you pigs. You want it, you get it. We're out here in Montauk in an Airbnb. I was promised that this was going to be a luxury experience, and it is not. And I am unhappy about it. I got a table of six squawking birds over there, which I don't like. And I got a, a guy on his mower. Okay. And I hope to God he's doing it because he enjoys it. Because if I look over there and I see that he's an employee and I have to look at those people, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. So I hope to Christ he's driving a John Deere because he enjoys it. Okay. And it is not a worker. While I'm sitting here in this shithole. That was it was supposed to be a surf cottage. What a working class hell Montauk is. I was in the Hamptons. I came back to see my family who will die of COVID-19 in the second wave. I will make sure of it. COVID-19 may leave bullet holes in them and strangulation marks around their neck. They're going down by November. They're going down by November. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. And I went to see them. I got an Airbnb on that part of Long Island the South Shore. I was sitting outside with two friends. Dan is producing the show today because Ben is back in California uh, and Dan is here because he doesn't have a life. So he's producing the show. I was here with Dan and Luke. Uh, the, the, Luke opens for me. And uh, I mean, I swear to Christ with the fucking lawnmower, I'm going to break someone's fucking head here. I really am. For the love of God. They don't even have a couch in the fucking living room here. It's two wood benches that they've put blankets on like we're in a methadone clinic here. And every the, the whole house is littered with Native American memorabilia. And by the way, I'm a supporter of the Native Americans. Many of you know that. But this house is owned by some white bitch who's decorated it all with fucking, you know, Coca Pelli and dream catchers and everything. It's, it's just not tasteful. Coronavirus would be the best thing that happened to this country. Welcome to the program, everybody. I am 100% in support of a full-scale pandemic of coronavirus in this country. Get people off the streets, out of the malls, into their homes. Get them fucking out of their cars. Close the schools and make the kids shoot their families and not each other. I think it would be a great change of pace 
in this country for a worldwide flu-like pandemic to hit. I'm in support of it. I look at the cases every day and I get angry there's not more. Everybody go in their house and start a podcast. That's it. There will be nothing left. The economy will collapse. Everybody will come either a podcaster or a cam girl or boy. And you'll either diddle yourself on camera or you'll yell into a microphone. And that's how this society should, uh, should appropriately disintegrate. With everybody sitting in front of a green screen. Ben and me have talked about this. This is how it ends. Everybody back into the house, in front of the green screen, live streaming and broadcasting. <laughs> That's it. And just delivery people that that brave the elements to deliver us our poke bowls and our uh, General Tao's chicken. That's it. That's exactly how the American experiment should end. With everybody in their home ordering roadcasters and microphones and headphones from Amazon, have them being delivered by drone and live streaming and deciding who's responsible for the pandemic. Is it Jews? Is it fucking, you know, is it the fucking deep state? Who is it? Is it the Chinese, the Chai Coms? Who did it to us? And we could spend the rest of our lives theorizing about why exactly this is happening. What a great opportunity to, let's put enough with the pop-up stores. And it's an experience. We're having an experience. We're filling these little boots with cheesecake. Enough. Go home. Lockdown. <laughs>